Hey guys, welcome back to the rod shop. Today we're gonna start the seven foot four heavy worm rod. So stick around. In a previous video, I gave you guys the recipe for building the seven foot four heavy worm rod. It's specifically being designed to fish deeper, like offshore ledges, deep brush in the 30 to 40 foot range. Um, Throwing, you know, big worms with heavier weights, like a half to three quarter, uh, just to get it down fast enough where you can actually fish it. So the blank that we're going to build on is the SJ736 uh, North Fork Composites 881 is the SKU number on this blank. It is a fast, heavy, but it's an SJ series. So it's a little smaller diameter than the MB series is. Which, if you compare a heavy fast MB to a heavy fast SJ, the fast is not quite as fast. So this is going to be more along the lines when you put that much weight on this blank, a moderate action. Yeah, that's, that's as close as I can explain it. Uh, that's the best explanation I've got. This this blank will fish more like a heavy modern. So let's get busy building. And I've done a few things already. Um, in the recipe video, I you know I showed you guys where I had cut a piece of sacrificial blank from one that I had broken previously. Um, so I save all of my broken blanks so I can cut pieces to do extensions with. Um, this fits in the butt of the blank pretty nicely. I've already sanded it. I used a uh, memory board here just to scuff the slick off of it. Um, so we're going to do a quick build here. This is not very complicated. The parts are pretty easy to work with. We're going to be using the carbon fiber grips. I also have already done a layout. And I'll show you what I did. I put it on my, uh, my little sheet board here. The trigger needs to be at 11 inches. So I've set my trigger at 11 and I put my tape mark in the wrong spot. I don't know how I did that. Glad I checked it. So let's actually do this layout again. I made a mistake. Told you that's gonna happen. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to set my trigger at 11 inches. I've got my butt cap on so I know exactly where the end of my rod is going to be. 11 inches is my trigger. And then the back of my rear grip is going to be right there. That looks a little better. So I'll mark that with tape. And fold over my flag. To make it easier to get it off when we're gluing up. So now let's check this one more time. So we've got a butt cap. With a butt grip. And we've got 11 inch trigger. That looks right. With the Fuji ACS exposed trigger seat. Now this should oops. This should slide down exactly to 11 if I've got it sized right. Now that's where it stops on a dry fit. When I glue this up, it will slide a little further down. And I don't want to do that right now. I don't want to scratch the blank. So when we slide that down to meet up to the rear grip, the exposed part here is going to be perfectly flush. Now, the only thing you'll have to worry about, since I did not use an insert, um, is you just have to make sure you get this section here very clean. Get all the glue residue off. And I'll probably use the clear uh, liquid epoxy to glue this up. So we'll get to that in a bit. All right, first things first, let's, let's, uh, let's spline the blank. So what I'm doing is I, I got my rod tip down in the carpet and I'm just spinning to look for the natural bend point. There's one. So 
Let's check it. Comes back to it. Oop. This actually has two. Oh. All right, I like I like that as the spline. Now, what that means? That's the bottom of the blank. That's the natural bend that the blank likes to have. That's where the trigger will be facing down, bottom of the blank. All right, let's get some epoxy out. Um, and we'll do, we'll ring these grips, get some epoxy out and glue everything up. Uh, just a sec. So I'm digging out my ringing kit. Oh, I got too much crap going here today. My extreme ringers. Just where you guys can see it. That's my power tools. Got a dead battery. So we're going to ring the butt grip first. Let's see where this gets us. Not even close. We're going to upsize on the ringers. you keep it round keep turning the uh the grip in your hand again not even close you're probably going to wind up losing most of that pen if not all of it <clears throat> by the time we get it reamed to the right id here Now we're just a smidge from where we need to be, but you cannot force these compressed foam grips because they will crack. So we'll take just a little bit more off. You can see 
just how thin we've gotten on this uh, this tenon back here for the butt cap. All right, let's ring the rear grip. Go <coughs> back to the small or the, the medium. That's what we'll start with. Check it. I think it's still a little small, but we'll check it anyway. Yep, we still need to go another 10 inches or so. Move my feet there. A little bit more. inches to go. Okay, now the reaming's done. Let's get some epoxy out and we'll start the glue up. So we'll go away. Made a mistake, and I broke the last little bit of tenon that was left on my butt grip because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Smacked it, and it shattered. Not the end of the world. We'll uh, clean that end up, and then we'll just make a tape barber. So what I'll do is I'll just take my file here. I'm going to file this off flat. Figure out where my butt cap's going to be. And I'll harbor up my butt cap. like this that's gonna work just fine mistakes happen you guys are gonna do that at some point so actually not bad you will see how to fix it All right. 
right now. I need to arbor my rear rib just a hair, make sure it stays centered. Here we go. Now you can't even tell that I made that mistake. Perfect. Okay. So let's get busy here. That goes perfect. It's nice and tight right there. I'm going to flag this so I can pull it off a little easier. <clears throat> okay. Now, it is time for some process. All right, then. Let's pull this loose. It'll be fine. That pencil, I'm just going to do a quick mark here. This is just so I don't get crazy with the glue, the epoxy. Same thing up here. Okay, epoxy time. They have pretty tight tolerances on these, so I'm not going to need a lot of epoxy this uh, go around, so I'm going to mix up on a small batch. Okay, let's mix it up. My hands are clean. Put the epoxy on it up to my pencil mark. And back to my rear arbor for the book cap. Spin this up. And we'll grab some paper towels. Let's excess off here. Let's move off of that. Let's go ahead and get the epoxy on for the. I got sticky fingers. Not good. Ooh, I made a mistake, guys. I made a big mistake. I forgot that we were extending, so we're going to have to make a quick adjustment here. A very quick adjustment. And get my extension piece in. That's what happens when you're not paying attention. And this morning, I'm, my head's not in the game. And I nearly made a tragic error here. So I wasn't paying attention, let's go ahead and glue this in. We'll do a quick on the fly fit up for the rear grip. Let's 
get this glued in. I'm going to peel. This is where I'm going to get my hands really messy. And I'm going to peel this off. And hopefully it goes to where we need it to go. So we'll slide this. Oh yeah, we got plenty of room here. Adjusting on the fly. Let's clean this off. Yep, that was almost tragic. That's why my mark, my original layout mark, was not where I thought it should be, but it was where it actually needed to be. Because of the extension. That's why. That makes more sense. Okay. Yeah, I got to a lot of quick cleanup here to do to make sure this stays where it should. This is no longer in the right spot. We're going to let this batch set. I'm going to regroup. We're going to have to ream a little more. I want to make sure I get all of the epoxy fingerprints off. And then we will start again. So what happens. This is going to be one of those days where you're going to see a lot of repairs and a lot of fixes to stupid mistakes. So don't go away, you don't want to miss these. All right, so now I'm checking my layout again, make sure I'm getting my trigger at 11. should be fine. Let's mark this up again. I'm going to mark that with half just to make cleanup easier. Steps. That's on there pretty snug. Okay, let's try this again. All right, so now we've recovered from the whoops. Nothing tragic. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of the paste. I'm 
I'm not going to need much because this fits very snug. And I'm not going to use it on the real seat. I think I'm going to use the, the 10 minute liquid on the real seat because that fits even more snug. this one up. Like I said, it's really a tight fit. So we're not going to need much epoxy on it. Really, you're just looking to get it wet. Because everything else you're going to wind up scraping off anyway as you push it back in place. Okay. Slide the rear grip in close. Get rid of that extra. into place, which is there. Well, let's get the epoxy off of the carbon fiber because it will look different if you do not get all of the paste off of it. When it dries, you're going to have a shine on your carbon fiber. Just a hair more. Peel the excess off. Right, let's get it clean. And let's take a look at the real seat here. That's going to be snug getting up there. But it will go. I think I'm going to use the epoxy for paste, even though I said that I was probably going to use the liquid. I got this mixed up. Let's go ahead and, it's, like I said, it's so tight that not much of it is going to stay on anyway. But it's got some ribs inside. The, uh, the real seat and there's ribs on the blank so this will fill in nicely and it'll be a little bit of a lubricant while we're trying to get it pushed up here and we got to figure out where our trigger is so let's spin that as we go get close hands clean and that a little excess here will wipe out In place, trigger is in the wrong spot. Trigger is now trigger is on the spine. Wheel seats tight to the rear grip. Now we got clean up to. And the last thing I'll do, and you guys have seen me do this before, since I'm going to use an epoxy ramp here, I'm going to pack just a little bit of epoxy in there to get rid of that gap. So when we go to do our thread finish ramp, it will have less of a tendency to want to throw a bubble at you. And just packing it in just in front of that real seat. And just shoving it in 
in that tiny little crack. And then we will just wipe it off. Okay, I think we salvaged that from a catastrophe to looking exactly like it's supposed to look. Let's do a little bit more clean up here just to be safe. And then we'll be back and we'll balance this rod and put the butt cap on it. Red build the arbor again. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. I know this uh, this extended piece has only got about 15 minutes of set time on it. I'm just gonna get it arbored up for now. Don't want to move, so it's getting in. It's pretty secure in there. Just a few more wraps. Alright, that's going to blow up nicely. Okay. This was a 7.3 rod to start with. We extended it to 7.4, and it has a very short trigger length for a rod this long and this beefy. Um, so it's gonna need some balancing. Now this is where you can take a moderately priced blank, and if you balance it correctly, the weight of the blank in your hand will make it feel like a more expensive blank. Now this happens to be a fairly expensive blank, but my point is that a properly balanced rod, in my opinion, is way more important than the weight of the rod if you just stand it up and put it on a scale. I don't care how much it weighs like this. What I care about is how much it weighs, the apparent weight in your hand. Now this is not bad. This is about a half ounce, I believe, out of being perfectly balanced. Um, the balance point, as you can see, is it's about you know, eight inches in front of the real seat. I like them to be pretty close to the front of the real seat. It makes the rod feel extremely light. It also, keeps you from wearing your forearms out and especially since this rod is going to be fished with at least a half ounce weight on it i want the weight the balance point brought back to right in front of the real seat so let me grab a couple of weights and then we'll figure out what it's going to take to balance this rod So I don't fish lead anymore, but I have a ton of it. Um, I buy it when it's on sale. And this is why I use, I have it, is that so I can balance these rods. I think these are quarters.
plank. Line up foot and three quarters. tape on the end of it just to keep them from falling out and I'll put it back in my hand that yes that's the balance point is somewhere in here about three inches above the real seat but it really feels light in the hand and by the time I get epoxy in here and some uh, finish work um, in the split grip area it'll add a little bit more weight back here but that's that is going to be perfect so we're going to add three quarters of an ounce of weight to a very expensive blank and people think I'm crazy when I do this but the people who have this rod in their hand or the people who fish my rods don't think I'm quite that crazy this is uh it makes a difference and uh you should try it for yourself a perfectly balanced rod is going to fish much better, going to perform much better under most circumstances than a very expensive rod that is not balanced properly. So I'm going to mix up some more paste. We're going to insert the weights to balance it and it will put the butt cap on and the handle assembly will be complete in under about 45 minutes, even with my mistakes that we had to fix. So don't go away. Now I mixed up quite a bit of epoxy because I'm going to pack this epoxy in the handle because I really don't want these weights coming loose. We've had one come loose. Um, it was one that Nathan did, his first one. It's in his rod, so every time he casts, he's got a little rattle, which I make fun of him all the time, but um, all you have to do to ensure that these weights won't come loose is something very simple. And it's a tape ball. You take some masking tape. And you're gonna ball it up and we're gonna put some epoxy in here first and then we're gonna stuff this tape ball. There's a little bit more to it. in here to hold the epoxy in place. Once the epoxy sets, you don't have to worry about it. And the trick is to make sure you have a completely packed full of epoxy until the, and, and tight until the epoxy sets. Now that's gonna slide up in front just perfectly, so I'll pull that out. Gonna be a pick. We're going to pack this blank Quite a bit of epoxy. We'll start our tape ball in. And pick, shove it in. And then more epoxy. First weight goes in. More epoxy. Second weight goes in. More epoxy. Third weight goes in. And I recess it in about a quarter of an inch. And the last bit of epoxy. And I'm going to wet my tape arbor. I don't want a lot on it, I'm just going to wet it. I 
I'm going to take my butt cap and I'm going to put some epoxy inside the butt cap to make sure we get this EVA. It has pores in it, but we want to fill all the pores in with epoxy. And then, I clean off my hand again. Slide it on. Push it up tight. We get a little epoxy to ooze out. Holding it with one hand, cleaning up the excess epoxy with the other. Let's clean it up nice. Because it's going to want to push off just a little bit. We've got it cleaned up. Now, the last trick to keep it from pushing off again, which is going to want to. Well, maybe not too bad. But before I walk away from it, I'm going to clean it one more time. Squeeze it one more time. And then I'm going to tape it on so it will not push off. And that is a completed handle set. Perfectly balanced rod. Yep, just in front of the reel seat. For the 7.4 heavy fast worm rod, I'm gonna stand it in a corner and just let the gravity Ensure that those weights stay down there in the epoxy. I'm gonna clean this rod shop up and in about an hour I'll start on the layout and the testing and the wrapping. So that's coming next video. This one's been long enough. I can build this rod in about a day and a half, but that makes for a very long video. So thanks for watching the handle set. Like I said, next video will be layout, testing, and then wrapping. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.